Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You straight gangsters over here, Drake man. Gangsters. Uh. 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 Good morning and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live like we bring it to you each and every weekday morning at 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. What? And the man on the other microphone, he is a great patriot. He loves America just as much as he loves Canada. America! America! Yeah, it's your boy, Chris America, coming to you live this Wednesday morning. Wednesday... To 2019, or is it 2019? I don't know, Loudbeard. I get confused with all these numbers and the date. To 2019, too many numbers. I get confused. Illuminati confirmed. Mm, okay. Well, good to know. I'm glad that the numbers are really uh, breaking it down for you this morning. It's kind of kind of rough not to like numbers. You know, they're kind of important, but that's okay. You can hate weird things. That's cool. Mm, I didn't hate on numbers. I said they confused me. Mm-hmm. Okay, Loudbeard, let's get things straight. All right, Why? All right, always all right. so now always you're recanting trying to twist your my original takes. statement. You're recanting always trying your to twist back. my takes, Loudbeard, and I don't mm. appreciate it. Mm. You heard it here first on Scout Team Radio. Chris America hates numbers. He wants all numbers to be destroyed. Loudbeard, I have uh, some big NBA news. Let's hear it, my friend. Probably the biggest NBA news all season long. More a lot bigger than the decision by LeBron James on any any of the three times that he's had a decision. Are you ready for it, Loudbeard? Are you, are you ready to hear it? If it is what I think it is, this is going to be epic. It's going to be epic of epic proportions. Bring it. Tristan Thompson cheated on Khloe Kardashian, and they are now over. Oh, come on. I don't... What? Who cares? Why are you... You're not even bringing it hot. What is this? That is what? hot. That is the hottest news out there. It is trending on Twitter right now. Millions upon millions of people are tweeting about this. Loudbeard. It, it is so hot right now. Oh, it's you got to be kidding me. Are Kylie you like Kardashian a... and Tristan Thompson are over. I, I see what you're doing. You're trying to bring in the, the, the stay-at-home moms that love to watch the Kardashians and, and get all enthralled into their lifestyle. Yeah, you're bringing in a different demographic than we normally have on our show. I would say, though, that our listeners don't give Jenner, Kylie Jenner being in the locker room single-handedly stopped the Cavs from winning four titles in a row with LeBron James. That's a good point. I mean, she she is as much NBA as anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And her name kind of sounds like Kyrie. So Kylie and Kyrie, they both screwed the, the Cavs. That that could be the next person she dates. You never Probably know with Kylie, be. Kylie yeah. Kardashian. Yeah, they, they would. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't well, even have it, to have it's like Kylie a, Jenner. Kylie, she's not Jenner. even a Kardashian. She's oh, a that's true. You're right. She's a Jenner. She is a Jenner. Hmm. Hmm. And so, see, I have daughters, and um, she makes this makeup that's just ridiculously expensive, and everybody wants it. And uh, yeah, my daughters like that, so I don't like her. She she. She's a uh, so now it comes out why you're on hating, on, hating on this epic Chris America bomb. I see why you're hating on this cab. That's what we're gonna call Chris America bombs cabs. Whoa, 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 whoa! Why are you bombing America, Chris? So this is the problem. You, you, I switched around a couple of the words, and I see what you're trying to do there. Wordplay. Are you trying to bomb America? Why do you hate no, America no. so much? No, no. Now you hate the Kardashians. You hate Tristan Thompson. You hate the Cavs. You hate LeBron James, and you hate America. What is? Where does it stop, Chris America? Where does it stop? It stops with mybookie.com. Go to mybookie.com. No, go to 12 Ounce Sports Radio. It's not mybookie.com. It's mybookie.ag, I believe, oh, sir. Is that what it is? I didn't have the uh, mm. the replay in front of me. Okay, but if you great. Go... You've blown up that spot, too. So now you're blowing up the spot, <laughs> blowing up America, blowing Speaking up of... 
Kyrie, speaking of, Kylie, speaking of bombs, LeBron, loud Tristan. Beard. Speaking of bombs, loud beard, you can go to 12 ounceSportsRadio.com. That's 120ZSportsRadio.com. And you can you can bomb it on the golf course. Go to, Scroll down to the bottom of the page, click Book Like a Pro, and you can get a discount on your next horrible golf game. Uh, you blow that up, too. I would. Oh, man, I am, I am a terrible. I cannot I you're stress gonna say enough terrorist. how bad I am at golf. All right. Well, we'll have to go out on the course one day, put some money on it. I hope you're not you sharking seen, me. You, you know how the hippopotamus is the most dangerous animal in the world? Yeah. I well, do. I'm a shank. I'm a shankopotamus, so it's pretty <laughs> dangerous to play golf with me. All right. So stand behind you, not in front of you, because at any angle, danger. Oh, it, it, it's coming for you. Anything within, you know, you know that radius, that 180 degree radius in front of me. All right, Chris America. Well, we have a, a dynamic show in front of us. Now that we, you got that Kylie Jenner news out of the way, we can talk about some real I, stuff. I, I feel like you and I are, are acting like Kylie and Tristan right now. We, I feel a lot of tension, Loudbeer. We need to bring it back. I know Valentine's Day was a week ago, but I, th- I feel like our bromance should be stronger than this. It shouldn't take, it should take longer than a week after the Valentine's Day bromance you know, wears off. I don't care how much I like you. If you threaten to bomb America one more time, I swear I'm going to come through this microphone and, and slap you. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, I see I know where I thought you were going to go. There was a, a little story that came out, not nearly as big as your Kyrie, or I'm sorry, Kylie Jenner story. Now I'm going to get Kyrie and Kylie mixed up like a thousand times name-wise. But, uh, it wasn't as big as that that Chris America bomb that you just dropped. But uh, LeBron confirmed that Space Jam 2 will be filming this summer. To me, that is a big NBA story. We need some Space Jam. Though there is no way in heck. I'm, see, I'm, I'm, this is for the families. You give me a hard time if I say the other word. There's no way in heck, Chris America, that Space Jam 2 will be anywhere as good as Space Jam 1. Don't you agree? Now, I'm kind of worried about the, the Looney Tunes being enslaved by aliens now because he LeBron James only has a three and nine shot of saving those guys. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, his odds aren't that great. Uh, hopefully Steph's in it. We need somebody. Maybe Steph and KD will come in and help save the day because those guys know how to win championships. Yeah, they definitely need to come in and save the day. I wonder if they're going to be the ones that have to – Get their powers or their basketball powers taken away. Not not a good time. I, I, what do you think the storyline is going to be? Let's let's take a guess. I mean, we've already done the whole. They take away the power. They can't do the same movie over again, can they? They can, and I have a feeling they will. Hollywood if is they, not if very they are, original. Just, All they if do they is are, regurgitate just, the same stories. Then just do a remake. Don't call it two. Just just call it Space Jam. Just make it a whole reboot type deal. And we'll just do it every every 20 years. We'll do a Space Jam. It's not a terrible idea, Chris America. You know, a lot of the kids of America don't understand the brilliance of Space Jam. I don't think a lot of them have seen it. So a new one with LeBron would bring people to the, the movies, man. It will put butts in the seat, just like LeBron does in L.A., like he did in Cleveland, like he did in Miami. He puts butts in the seat, and he will do that in the movie theater. And it doesn't matter that Space Jam 1 was so amazing and Michael Jordan is still the GOAT. People will go and see LeBron in a Space Jam. So you're right. Maybe we just do Space Jam 1 reimagined with different dudes, but same exact story. Yes, um, I'm good with that. What about Harry Potter? Can they reboot Harry Potter? Let's just reboot everything. They eventually will. They eventually will. Well, Chris America, I'm talking about putting butts in the seats and... We talked about MJ in the original Space Jam. MJ is a North Carolina alum, and we've got a UNC-Duke game that's coming on tonight. Big rivalry. You asked me what I thought last night. I told you Duke's going to mop the floor with these guys, right? So I know what I'm talking about. But Duke-UNC, tickets sales are going through the roof. They're they're estimating that the tickets are at least $2,500 per seat because of this classic rivalry. And the new face of the NBA in the future here, Zion Williamson. This guy has become such a draw that they're even they're even saying that Vivid Seats is reporting that customers have paid 
over ten thousand dollars for seats for this this game coming up tonight. Chris America, are you excited to watch Duke smack UNC all over the court tonight? I'm I'm excited to hopefully see you eat an idiot sandwich tomorrow, especially with all the contention you have. I'm ready to see you choke down an idiot sandwich tomorrow. I'm I'm all UNC. Go Tar Heels. Oh, look at you. What do you Michael Jordan got to you, huh? No, he, Michael he Jordan's always gotten you. to me, man. Michael Jordan brainwashed me decades ago, Loudbeard. I was a be like Mike, nothing but net. If he would have told me that slap bracelets could make me slam dunk, I would have had like 50 of them. Oh, Chris America. Yeah, you Don't know act what? like you, Jordan... you wouldn't have either. Hey, no, on a, a, another just side note, this was just a little bizarre story. So there was a, apparently a, like a closed down mall that had been abandoned, and there was like a, a shoe store in there, and somebody had gone in, and they found this like really rare pair of Michael Jordans in, a, in the box still that had never been worn, sitting on like this back shelf. Like I guess it got missed. It was underneath something. And so this old abandoned mall had this pair of MJs, and now they're going to be going for like a bazillion dollars on the internet. Michael Jordan still has clout, man. This guy, everywhere he goes, Michael Jordan is still the man. I don't care what anybody says, except when he goes for UNC against Duke. That's when he's wrong. But every other time, Michael Jordan is so money. So money. He is money, Loudbeard. But let's let's go back to these ticket prices. And this is why I believe athletes in college should be paid. These prices would not be this high if Zion Williamson wasn't on the Duke Blue Devils. They've been high before, but they've never been this high. And every so often, Duke and UNC, they get their own demand because of their brand. But they're not getting $10,000 a ticket if Zion's not on the court, if Zion chooses to go play for Florida State or for Gonzaga or for UCLA, this game would just be another Duke UNC game, which would have its own expense. I'm not taking away from that rivalry, but the fact that they're reaching Super Bowl ticket prices is because of Zion. And to me, I feel like the American thing to do is when somebody brings in money to your business, they should get a cut of that pie. That's just that's just how it is for me personally, Loudbeard. And we're starting to see this more and more now. And I know that college basketball mentioned that they're going to allow the players, certain players hand selected by the bas- USA basketball to get agents and stuff. No, just forget that. Let every single college basketball player allowed to get an agent and s- and sponsor themselves or brand themselves like anybody else. Oh, man, this is the great debate, isn't it? Embrace debate. Now, to me, Zion isn't the guy that should be making money off of this. This is, see, because I know Zion's going to make bazillions of dollars in his career. There's no doubt in my mind that this dude's not going to make a ton of money. So I'm not worried about him today. Why shouldn't he get the cut of the pie that he's generating? Why should he have to worry about his money in the future? Why can't he get his money now? That he's the he's the one that's generating this okay. buzz. He's the one that's generating these ticket prices. Come on, you know I don't like logic. You don't when you make sense, it doesn't mean <laughs> anything to me. It doesn't make any any sense to me. I don't like logic. Whatever. So my what I was trying to say is that these guys that are sitting there that are the let's say the lesser known starters or or the guys sitting on the bench. They're still part of the team, and they'll probably never make any money in the NBA. So those guys deserve a cut. So where I'm not worried about Zion, I do think that he deserves part of the cut. But again, back to that classic argument, how do you pay the players? Do you do a blanket? Everybody gets some sort of stipend. I mean, maybe it should be some sort of profit sharing. If the basketball program makes a profit, let's say on this event they make – I don't know, four or five hundred thousand dollars. There should be a percentage that goes to each of the the players. Now it's a small venue, so I mean, well, let's say it's a million dollars. There should be a percentage that goes to those players, and you and you and I agree on this. They should pay the players, but the structure, I think, is where we 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 we're going to challenge each other because no, I do not think college athletes should get agents. I think that complicates things. What are we going to do? In the middle of the season, had Rich Paul come out and say, that's it, Zion's not going to play anymore. He demands to be traded over to the 
Florida State Seminoles because they're hot right now and they're on a seven or eight game winning streak and we want to make sure he wins the championship before we go to the NBA and we want to make a little bit more money and there's a booster over there willing to pay really high ticket prices just so that they can get this guy and make no agents complicate things Chris America you know this I don't know why you want to put agents on everything we don't want agents we want it to be still innocent but we want these guys to get paid so there should just be some sort of sharing okay you made this much money off of this event the players get, you know, a, a small percentage of that. And then they can take that money and whether it goes into a fund where they can't take it until after they get out of college or something, like I would be okay with that. But they still deserve their cut. One way or another, they deserve that money, Chris America. Pay the man, Chris America, not the agent. Pay the man. Well, the only reason why I want an agent is because I want the student to still somewhat be a student athlete now. They use that term very loosely, student athlete, because we know that we know that most of them don't really go to class, and if they do go to class, they have tutors taking their tests for them and everything. And you know, every so often, like Missouri or Florida State or UNC, they get caught and they give them a little slap on the wrist. They don't do that again, and then they go back to doing it again. But I want the student to be focused on if he does decide to be a student athlete to focus on classes and and basketball and stuff. I don't want him focused on how much Nike's offering him and how much Adidas is offering him and, and everything else or working on contract deals that he probably doesn't understand because he's an 18-year-old kid and they just don't teach sports contracts and advertising contracts in high school. Uh, unfortunately, they just don't. So you need somebody to kind of help them out. Now, yes, are there vultures out there? Are there bad agents who create distractions? Of course they are, but... There's bad parents also. So there are. Coming You're from right. All ends. Yeah, You're it right. comes from all ends. So we can't protect the world. Now, we do have Mike Berlon, big fan of the show. Thank you for listening. He says, I think the answer is easy. Just let the kids make money off their own name doing endorsement deals. No school has to pay anything. The stars would get their money, and the guys at the end of the bench will get a few bucks. I'm semi-okay with that. I still just don't like the fact of any business just generating a billion dollar industry off of people and them not having to pay or just paying very, very little, especially now. Like I'm not taking away from a college education, but they're literally paying them the least. Like when they say this is the least I can do, giving a free scholarship is literally the least financial thing a college can do for, for somebody. Oh, Chris America. You didn't even mention Mike Berlan is from Craft Brood Sports. It airs I apologize. every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio and on their Facebook live feed where you get to watch the guys live as they do crazy, ridiculous things. Um, I disagree with Mike Berlan because I think the school should be paying it. I like the percentage of the profits because I feel like that's fair. So if a guy brings in more money or a team brings in more money, that entire team gets a little piece of that pie. He mentions a guy on the end of the bench might make a few bucks. Some of these guys that are second string guys won't make anything and they won't make anything in their career where a guy like Zion was going to make bazillions of dollars. I think it should be fair. And then we get into that argument. Well, what about the water polo team that doesn't bring any money in? Well, you know what? They don't get a percentage of it profits when there aren't any profits. It's just the football, the basketball, the other programs. It's just, it's just called America. Right, That's if you how can we make do it money here. off of it. And I'm sure some of the other programs out there, like if you have a top soccer program, UNC is always known for having really great soccer programs. They have a, probably have a pretty good draw. They might, might, might make a little bit of money off of that. So then the soccer team could take percentage of the profits off of that. So it's fair because it is. It's the American way, right? If you make money, you, should, you deserve that money. We want Americans to be bazillionaires all the time so let's take the money out of right. the rich man and put and if, it into the pockets and if all of, the of a students. sudden if all of a sudden espn gives a 500 million dollar contract to to put water polo on at eight o'clock every saturday night and have kirk curb street or the equivalent of the kirk curb street of water polo and they generate millions upon millions or billions of billions of dollars off of water polo then hell yeah pay the water polo players give them their cut Good point. Good point. Well, Chris right. America, we talk about paying players, and we didn't even start out with this big story. It broke yesterday. Oh, to me, yes. it was the biggest story in all of the world because finally baseball has paid a player. And yesterday, your boy, Manny Machado, $300 million, 10 years, 
We knew it was coming, but I didn't know he was going to get that much. I thought he was going to be in that two fifty million range, maybe for like an eight year deal. Three hundred million dollars, ten years. What is going on, Chris America? Well, Ladbury, that wasn't where I was expecting you to go when you said speaking about paying players. I thought you were going to go with the Allegiance of or Alliance of American Football not paying their players last Friday. Hmm. But yes, the Manny Machado story, three hundred million dollars, has the baseball world up in arms, and I would have to assume that sixty to eighty percent of that is because he didn't sign with a baseball darling or a baseball traditional powerhouse. I think if he would have signed with the Cubs or the Phillies or the um, the Yankees, it would have been like, oh, what a what a great deal. But because he he signed with the San Diego Padres, probably one of the most I, I, I probably sound like a hater, but I'm going to say it, man. An unstoried program. Like, when I think of franchises that I forget ex- exist all the time, San Diego Padre in that mix of teams. Okay, Chris America, you are a hater. Um, when I think of the Padres, first thing that comes to mind is Tony Gwynn. One okay. of the greatest hitters of all time. Sitting out there in San Diego, just batting away. Early on, he had the... the the McGriff crime dog with them. Uh, I remember Tony Gwynn. Now, is it a championship pedigree team? No. But they've got some history in Major League Baseball. And honestly, and I know that you share the same sentiment off air when we were discussing the show. We talked about this. Is This is a smaller market team. Not that San Diego's is like a small city or anything. But, you know, it's not the New York's, the Boston's, the Chicago's, the L.A.'s. It's one of the other teams that ended up getting this guy. And I love what San Diego's doing, man. They're they're go trying to rebuild their program by getting big names in, and this is the only way they can do it is by paying a ton of money to a guy to get a big name on their program. And I I love it. I hate the amount. The amount is terrible. The length of contract is terrible. There should not be 10-year contracts. I think that's something that Major League Baseball needs to look at. The problem is, is the Major League Baseball Players Association – has had so much power over the years. They've had strikes. They they just they're they're a really needy bunch, Chris America. These guys, they always want more. They want more. They want more. I'm sorry. They're they're upset because a guy waited to get signed. He got a three hundred million dollar contract. I don't care if it took three months to get signed. You got paid three hundred million dollars guaranteed. NFL contracts aren't guaranteed. NBA can't sign more than four or five years because the league doesn't permit it. And Major League Baseball, we're like 10 years, guaranteed money, $300 million. This is ridiculous is the amount, but it's good the team that he went to. Just saying. Well, nobody had to sign him, Loudbeard, right? The Padres didn't have to sign him to 10 years, and I believe there is rumors, whispers, that the Chicago Cubs, or sorry, the Chicago White Sox offered him an eight-year uh, contract, which is still, I mean, that's a little bit, it's not, at, it's still long. But he had an offer to go eight years. The Padres offered him ten, and that's who he signed with. I mean, oh, I don't on, mind America. it. So you know that Colin Kaepernick didn't have to get signed either, and then he sues the league. So somebody had to sign him. Otherwise, there would be a lawsuit. What would the lawsuit be? You're asking for too much money and too much, too much time. Okay, so we don't want to sign I'm, you. I'm just going off the rails here. Sorry. I go know. ahead. <laughs> go back to your logic, please. Stop Could trying you, to bring Colin Kaepernick into everything. Tim Tebow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. I mean, look, we talked about how San Diego, I can't remember the last time we talked about the San Diego Padres or the last time we thought about him. I know you're a big Tony Gwynn guy, but that was what, 30 years ago now that he was uh Come on. Don't hate on my Tony Gwynn. Don't hate on my Tony Gwynn. Um and if you say 30 now, years ago, it really makes me all, feel sad. I think it was Padres more like 25 to 20. Padres are all they talk about now. Yesterday, I, the the Padres got more airplay on the radio than they have in probably since Tony Gwynn. And <laughs> I think now they'll Tony end up Quinn. on they'll end up on more Sunday night baseball on ESPN. I think they'll generate a, a city that just lost their NFL team. So I think the fan base is there. They're looking for something to to cling on to, and why not cling on to Manny Machado? Uh, from everything I've heard, they have a great farm system, Loudbeard, and they have a young core that's coming up. And hey, man, you build that young farm core around one guy. And you go for it. You swing for the fences. I say good for the Padres in getting this done. 
Well, Chris America, first you talk about logic and you're acting like Spock, and now you're talking about Klingons. So I feel like you're a Star Trek nerd. <laughs> but I digress. So, yes, it's great for the city, but I, that money and the length of contract, I mean, this is the problem what I, ha- what I have with Machado. is, yes, uh, Last year he was traded over to the Dodgers, and, and there was times where he took plays off and he didn't hustle and – he was running down the baseline, blowing bubbles on on close plays, and to me, the guy isn't a three hundred million dollar man. The problem is, is that you don't get a guy with this much talent that comes into free agency that often. So when it when he does, even though he may lack a little maturity and maybe lack a little bit of that that eye of the tiger that we've talked about on this show so many times, he might lack some of that. But he is, does still have a ton of talent, and he can hit. And the Padres, they need to fill the stadium, right? They want to get butts in the seat. They want to bring a have a draw to their stadium. So they, they want to sell did. jerseys. Yeah, jerseys. Now, obviously, I believe that Bryce Harper is going to be a bigger contract, and he's a bigger name. To me, Bryce Harper was the big fish of this. Machado was just a slightly smaller fish, and. Harper, to me, would be the guy that would bring more jersey sales, more butts in the seat, that sort of thing. I think Machado is a little bit of that second tier. But you know what the Padres are doing? They're going after Harper, too, man. They're, they're not done. They, there's rumors out there that they are willing to do a similar, maybe even a more equitable, profitable deal for Bryce Harper. If they overspend for Bryce Harper and for Manny Machado this offseason— would you, as a fan, putting the economics aside, if you had both Machado and Bryce Harper on your team, would you in San Diego, if you were a casual baseball fan that had not, hadn't gone to a game in five years, would you finally say, "Now I kind of want to go see these guys"? You'd oh be, hell yeah! Yeah, you'd absolutely. be pumped. Why wouldn't you be? If the Rays did it, if Tampa Bay Rays signed these two guys, I would be driving the two and a half hours to St. Pete to go watch some Rays baseball. And I've probably done that twice in my whole, whole entire life. Mm. I'm with you, Chris America. I mean, the fan base has got to be pumped. The I, I love what they're doing. I love the excitement. You love the excitement. It's a small market team that, that's really starting to drum up some excitement. I want to even watch a few Padres games on TV next year just so I can see how Machado's doing. Now, if they got Harper, I'd probably watch more than just a few games next year. And I, I hope that this team pulls the trigger on it. But now the domino that needs to fall is Bryce Harper. That's where we're going with this. Is Where is Bryce Harper going to land? The Nationals, I'm pretty sure they have a deal still on the table for Harper. So Harper's looking at that. The Phillies, they were aggressive. They have a deal on the table. And the Padres might be in the mix. So where does Bryce Harper land, Chris America? I don't know. I, I, I didn't hear that the Padres were going after him hard. But uh, if this was the NBA, I would put my money on the Padres because that's what NBA players do. But... Uh, I don't know. Does Bryce Harper want to be the guy? Is he that committed to the Nationals? What I really know the answer to the question is, Loudbeard, is whoever offers him the most money in the longest contract is going to be the one that ends up with him. <laughs> well, that's the easy answer, right? Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, I, exactly. Right. So I just don't know who that is. I uh, wish you're like, right. And nobody. Like, does. I didn't even know. I didn't even it's know the White Sox. I didn't even know the White Sox were a player for Machado until he signed, and then all of a sudden you start hearing all these other rumors of contracts being offered and and everything else. And I guess the 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 White Sox offer was a little bit more money but shorter time. And we see that the the players for now at least want that longevity. They want that ten year. That ten years is a negotiable point or a breaking point for for players. So I think he would have. Ooh, excuse me. I think he would have gotten like two or three million dollars a year more for that eight year contract. But I guess he decided that extra two years of guaranteed money is more important than the extra money on the contract. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So now, um before we go to a commercial break, I just want to bring this quick point up. Um we mm-hmm. talked the other day about Wainwright um saying that the the baseball might strike. So twenty twenty one is when the collective bargaining agreement is gonna be ending. Um, it's starting to get a little contentious between the players and the uh, and Rob Manfred, the commish. So now that we see a three hundred million dollar deal, things might loosen up. But I just want to say these comments, Chris America, and then you can lead us into the the commercial break. But let's see, 
pulling it up. Sorry, I should have been ready. But players' eyes don't deceive them, nor do fans. As players report to spring training and see respected veterans and valued teammates on the sidelines, they are rightfully frustrated by a two-year attack on free agency. Players commit to compete every pitch and every at-bat and every inning of every game. Yet we're operating in an environment in which an increasing number of clubs appear to make little effort to improve their rosters, compete for a championship, or justify a price of a ticket. That's coming from Tony Clark, executive director of the Players Association. And then Rob Manfred comes out, and he basically says, you know what? You guys need to stop talking and bring all your talk to the bargaining table. So Manfred is getting pissed that they're talking. So now, all of a sudden, Chris America... I see an explosion and baseball spiraling out of control really soon here. And with that being said, I think we have to go to a commercial. Yes, our commercial break is going to be brought to you by uh, Silver's Commissioners for Dummies. Uh, Adam Silver, the greatest commissioner in all of American uh, commissioning sports, is going to offer this new class for Roger Goodman of the world. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12-ounce sports radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Ring Central features all in one phone, messaging, and video conferencing. It's easy to use with unparalleled security. Ring Central simplifies things so you can grow. Call Ring Central to speak with a representative about a price for your growing business at 877 779 3860. Again, that's 877 779 3860. Hey everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Yeah, welcome back. You're listening to Scout Team Radio. Coming back after that hot commercial break, I'm Loudbeard. He's Chris America. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning at 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We're also a podcast. We record each and every episode and drop it as a podcast daily. You can catch that podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or our website, Scout Team Radio. Dot com. We're also a part of the Barn Burner Podcast Network. Our good friends over at Barn Burner like to replay our podcast daily on their network. We love them for that, so thank you, Barn Burner. Also, if you want to get social with us, make sure you hit us up on 
Scouts at Scout Team Radio on Twitter. We love talking on Twitter. If you hit us up, like Mer- Mike Berlon from Craft Root Sports did earlier in the show, we will read your tweets on the air. We will discuss your topics, and we will have fun with that. Well, without further ado, Chris America, man, you're... You're hating on Rob Manfred. You know, we're hating on Roger Goodell. We're hating on everybody. But Adam Silver, he's like he's like the the top of all these commissioners. But Chris America, when we talk about the Alliance Football League, are they being commissioned very well over there in the Alliance? Well, they uh they just got a new commissioner, Loudbeard. We mentioned the three hundred million dollar deal. Well, the Alliance of American Football just basically sold for two hundred and fifty million dollars, Loudbeard. Um, now there's a lot of speculation going on, and I think the sharks in the media who love to hate on things, love to put down any new effort to bring in minor league football, which I never understand, Loudbeard. Why, anytime anybody attempts to bring in minor league football, there is a portion of society who's ready to hate on it, ready to discredit it make fun of it, do whatever they can to make sure it never succeeds. And I don't understand why, because we need minor league football out here. We need more football in our lives, and players need more football to help them succeed. And so that's what happened. So the first story broke that uh, payroll didn't get made. We mentioned that earlier in the show. Friday came and went, and the players did not receive a paycheck. Now, that's not a good sign, is it, Loudbeard? No, that is not a good sign. And the only way to fix that is to bring in a real man. A you got to bring in man. a real man to help you out, don't you, Chris America? You know yep. what kind of real man you bring in? You need a man who is making tons and tons of money off of uh, a bunch of jerk t-shirts. Yes, a man that has one of the greatest hockey franchises, Loudbeard's favorite team as of yesterday, the Carolina Hurricanes. This team is going in the right direction. They are a bunch of jerks, and you know what? Don Cherry, if I had him in front of me right now, I would I'd punch him in the face because he's a jerk. Oh, he's you're a still, jerk for even you're still fired about up it. about him, huh? No, I'm absolutely fired up because my owner of the Carolina Hurricanes stepped up, and he's coming in, and he's saving the Alliance Football League, and I'm telling you right now, that is an owner of a team that is not a bunch of jerks. It is absolutely a not a bunch of jerks. So I'm just saying to you, Chris America, that Don Cherry guy, man, he really, ooh, he boils my blood he, right he now. Grinds he grinds your gears. my gears. Yeah, he's grinding my gears right now. Oh, no. So, wait, wait. Hold on. We had the line open. Who's this calling in? Hello? Uh, caller, thank you for calling in to Scout Team Radio. How are you doing this morning? Hello, this is Don Cherry. How are you, young man? Oh, Don Cherry. I knew you were listening, and I... Don Cherry, this is Loudbeard from Scout Team Radio. I appreciate you calling into our show. But yes, I, just, I, I was listening yesterday, and I meant to send you a telegram about your comment because I don't have Twitter, but apparently telegrams aren't a thing anymore. You're an old man, Don Cherry, and you're curmudgeon, and I hate you. Um, but is that what the telegram was going to say is how much you loved me? Yes, I'm tired of you darn whippersnappers always celebrating and being rude. And uh, ho- hold on a second. Oh, there's some damn kids sitting on the corner again with their backpacks. Hey, you kids, get off my lawn. Oh, Don Cherry, you are a... Yes, these kids, <sighs> every single day, they come in with their backpacks just hanging out on the street corner like a bunch of hooligans. Well, Don Cherry, you know... The the Carolina Hurricanes, they're just trying to celebrate and have a good time. Do you not like fun? Listen, in my day, we didn't even know what fun was. We used to play hockey uphill both ways in the snow. How can you go uphill both ways? That's not even physically possible. Have you never played Super Mario Brothers 3, young man? I have. Have you? Yes. There's an uphill both ways. On that game in the snow. You don't even know what you're... T- okay, never mind. Okay, Don Cherry, I just wanted to ask you, how could you call a great t- hockey team like the Carolina Hurricanes a bunch of jerks? How could you be that 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 cold and ruthless? Well, hockey's a cold game, my friend. 
And maybe you would learn that someday when you learn some manners. I remember when Polk was president and kids were kids that respected their adults and nobody celebrated anything. I hate you. Are you sleeping? Oh, what? What? Did you fall asleep on the phone? Who? Who is this? I'm not interested in whatever it is you're selling. You know Goodbye, what? Goodbye, Dave. Goodbye, sir. I am not interested in whatever you're selling. I don't know why you keep calling me. I have to go watch Murder, She Wrote. Unbelievable. We, we, we just lost them. Wow. We had the legend, the Hall of Famer, Don Cherry, calling in after he calls our Carolina Hurricanes a bunch of jerks. And the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes goes out and saves the Alliance. And after all of that, we have that jerk, Don Cherry, call into our show and disrespect me like that. Chris America, oh my gosh, can you believe that call we just received? I cannot believe it, but then again, I can believe it. Man, <laughs> I'm surprised he knew how to use a phone. Do you think he called on a rotary phone? Uh, yeah, I think so. He was looking for pay a payphone, but there weren't any around. Well, Loudbeard, let's move on from Don Cherry, and let's talk about something I want I want to know, Loudbeard. We just saw that there was a 10-year, $300 million investment in and now uh, Tom Dundon, billionaire extraordinaire, hockey extraordinaire, or hockey owner extraordinaire, invested $250 million. Who made the smarter money investment? Was it the San Diego Padres, $300 million, or... Tom Dundon's $250 million into the AAF. Well, Chris America, this is a great question. Uh, I've looked a lot at, at the Alliance and, and what they have done to build this program because I look at minor league football, and like you said, we need a, a great minor league football program. We need something other than what we have in the NFL. There needs to be a feeder system, and the Alliance was built to be that. They were put in cities where there aren't football teams currently they didn't go after the New Yorks where there's already a, a saturated market because they're all Knicks fans and Yankees fans and Giants fans and Jets fans they went into markets where th the markets wanted a football team the Birmingham's and the Orlando's and the San Antonio's and the San Diego where the football team already left so San they made Diego it's a Wales okay so then they make these good decisions on the cities. I felt they were great. A lot of them were hotbeds for talent. So you go to Texas and Florida and California. This is where college football hotbed recruiting is, right? So a lot of these programs are pulling players, like the Orlando Apollos are pulling players from Florida, from Florida State, from Miami, from UCF, from USF. They're pulling from all these programs, and it's these players that aren't making it to the NFL, so they're getting talent. Same thing in Texas. There is a ton of football talent in Texas. San Antonio, a great place, a great city to have a team. So they made smart decisions there. Um, when they were starting out, I heard they had funding for three years. That's why they did three-year contracts with other players, that they had enough funding to last three years, Chris America. All of this is smart. Make sure you have enough money to make the league last. They've been smart with advertising and marketing. I see them all over the place on social media. Um, they're on CBS. They've partnered with the NFL. They're on the NFL network. They've said to the players if they get a contract with the NFL, they can break their alliance contract. It's, it's part of the deal. They've done everything they can to be the minor league system. They're not going to fight the man, but they're being a part of the man. But with all of that being said, I was flabbergasted, as Don Cherry would say, flabbergasted that the league is already out of money. I don't even believe it. I'm actually already one of those aluminum foil hat type guys where I'm like, this, this can't be true. How do you do all of this, get this league ready, and by week two you're out of money? Uh, so I'm going to say to your question, which I've completely w walked around in circles, I'm going to say to your question that the smart money would be paying a baseball player because you're the Padres and you have money and you can do this and it's not going to affect them too much. But the real good money, the one, the high risk, high reward is putting your money into the Alliance. Now the owner of the Hurricanes, he is already an owner of a, uh, a hockey franchise that is successful. So he brings in a lot of insight. He brings in a lot of what it's going to take to make this league work. To me, the sky is the limit for the Alliance. 
that's where the good investment is because the reward is going to be so much greater. I think that this league can do it. I believe in the Alliance, Chris America, and that to me is the best investment, and I'm glad he came in. He swooped in. He saved the Alliance. Come on. We got to make this work. We need this. Fans do not need another defunct league out there that tried to go up against the NFL. This is not what they're doing. We just want a minor league system. We want a little extra football after February. This is what we're getting. Oh, Chris America, that does that answer your question? Ladbeard, I, I got kind of lost on the, the second turn on, on Dewberry Street. I, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Where we're, so you are you on team $250 million being the better investment or team Machado being the better investment, $300 million? No, I, I'm 100 team $250 million. Okay. Now, when you say better investment, some people are safe investors, Chris America. That's what I'm saying. I'm no, saying no, I, I'm, on, I'm wanting to know. You just answered the question, Ladbeard. If you're Don stop, Cherry and you walk to the, the community s- bank. Ladbeard, you just spent five minutes t- twisting and turning to get there. Which is the answer, buddy? Which do you think is the I better investment? I already told you. I already so the $250 million. I'm going to embrace the bait. And I'm going to disagree with you, Ladbeard. You are of wrong. Of course you are. You're Don yes. Cherry's best friend, you curmudgeon. <clears throat> That's why I was silent during his phone call. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt the man. We're, we're good friends. But I'm going to say that the Machado investment was smarter because, one, there's a little bit more of a guarantee that you can get your money back off of Machado. The only risk here is that maybe he gets injured, he turns into an Albert Pujols, and somewhere down the line, you don't get to make that money back. But I think right away, Padres are going to see an influx in cash of ticket sales and jersey sales and just all-around buzz around the city. And they're going to generate that where this is a straight $250 million investment where the Padres are only going to pay $30 million this year. They don't have to pay the $300 million yet. They might not even have to pay the full $300 million in the end if they decide, hey, man, we can't really afford this anymore. Hey Yankees, hey Cubs, uh, you want you want Manny Machado? We can trade you. Where t- t- Tom Dundon is stuck with this one, man. If he if the league doesn't work out, he can't just trade it to the NFL. He can't trade it to like Premier Soccer League and say, hey, do you want this like this uh, minor league football? I'll, I'll trade you that for for a bag of chips or something. I don't know, but they they can't. He can't get rid of this investment. Is what I'm saying. He can't dump it like the Padres have an option to dump it. So I'm gonna go Padres. $300 million into Manny Machado is a little bit better money well spent than a league that may or may not be around in two years. Okay, Chris America. I see you, you're the safe investor. I see what you're, where you're going with this. Um, you're, you're, you know, if you want to make your, your 1% every, every year on, on your safe little savings account because that's a great investment, yeah, that's great for you. But I'm all in, man. I'm going big. You go big or you go home. And to me, investing is all about taking a risk. Now, you know, it's like when you walk into the casino, you don't go in there with your rent money and say, okay, if I lose it all, I'm not going to be able to afford it. This is a billionaire with that $250 million. Yeah, it would hurt, but he can afford to lose that. And guess what? If it pays off, it could pay off and triple his money, his triple his return. The Padres are never going to make that three hundred million dollars back. Now they'll they'll come close. Oh, you can't in say ticket that. Sales. Oh, come on! I can say whatever the hell I want. It's a live <laughs> radio. This is America. America. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Ladbard, I, I do want to talk a little bit. I do agree with you. I think it's a smart investment. We're really just asking between those two, but I like it. I I think it's a little little heavy price. I don't know that the AAF is worth two hundred fifty million dollars, and we don't even know. What kind of shares he got? Did he get 51%? Did he get all of it? Did he? They're not really discussing what the... They said he's a major, majority shareholder now in this in this company of the American... Or the Allegiance of American Football. So I don't know how much he bought. So let's say if it's 51%, do you think the league is worth $500 million right now? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, Chris America, oh, because man, I don't know it's that based it's worth off the of potential, man. Oh, you're, you're doing this based off of the future returns. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, it's, so it's... what if, and I'm going to throw out a couple what ifs at you, Chris America. What if, you know, Colin Kaepernick said he wouldn't play unless he got paid $20 million. So they take this $250 million investment, and I can bring up Colin Kaepernick as much as I want. And they go out and they, they sign Colin Kaepernick for $20 million. Do you think all of the sudden 
And you're talking about $300 million to be a worthwhile investment. I'm saying $20 million in a guy like Colin Kaepernick who has become so polarizing that we could actually see a huge influx of people that want to watch and see what he's got in the tank. Would something like that spark some interest? You add this capital in, and now the, the sky is the limit again because this league can continue to grow. It's a startup business. With startup businesses, it takes capital, it takes time, it takes patience, and we have to be able to deliver all of these things if we want this league to work, Chris America. And that's what I'm saying is this this is worth it. It is worth it because of future returns. If it works out, if it pans out, it's going to be huge. Well, I do believe, Loudbeard, that when I heard the news that they got the $250 million, it made me excited for the league because it means – that the league is going to stick around. Like Tom Dundon didn't become a billionaire by just throwing away money and then giving up on things right away. Like he didn't put a quarter of a billion dollars into this league for him to just not put in any effort. Now you're right. They might go. I don't know if they're going to go out and sign Colin Kaepernick for $20 million, but they might sign some other players for a little bit less and give, give some real contracts. They're going to Put in more money into to to boosting up the the advertising and and everything else like that. He's gonna put a lot of effort into this, and I'm excited about it. I think it made the league more viable. People are looking at this like, oh, the league was failing, and they got a bailout. No, they got an investor. Billionaires don't just bail out startup companies. That's not what they're billion dollars. They're not the government where they're like, oh, this business is in trouble. I'm a nice guy. Let me throw a quarter of a billion dollars at this business to bail them out. That's not what happened. Tom Dundon looked at this league. He probably saw how how everybody's reacting to it and how much people are loving the AAF right now and said, like you said, there's a lot of potential here. There's a, there's a money potential here. And he made an investment. Like I said, there's sharks swimming in the water, Loudbeard. They love to hate on a minor league football team. They're like, oh, they miss payroll. Now, the AAF, if you choose to believe them or not, said it was a technical error in their payroll system. That I believe I think they, they switched companies and, and everything else. And, hey, that's a very plausible answer. The reality is now that they have $250 million of cash infused into their bank account, none of that really matters anymore, does it? Whether it was no, no. they were about to close doors or it was just a simple payroll error. Uh, I believe it was a payroll error. I believe in this. Right. I believe in that the the theories because they've put so much into this league. They're not going to be folding up at week two. It just doesn't work that way. When you make a business plan, you have enough capital to make it through at least one season. And from what I understand, they had enough to make it through three seasons. I don't think they were as cash poor as people are making it out like this was do or die. And a billionaire isn't going to just throw $250 million at something that he doesn't think he's going to get some sort of return on. And this is a smart billionaire, a man that's successful owning a hockey franchise. This this was a good move on all parties, and the Lions is gonna, going to thrive. Yes, I, I, I agree with you, Loudbeard. I'm excited for it. I, I'm glad we get to see the Orlando Apollos. They're going to at least complete this season. That was one thing I was worried about. Because we have heard this story before, Loudbeard, where the money runs out, the people who budgeted the money weren't smart with it, they they overextended themselves trying to get the league off the ground, but Loudbeard, I am, for one, I think another thing that this does is it not only just gets the Colin Kaepernick's in, but maybe it does get a few more of the Trent Richardson's of the world, where they had a good job, they had a six-figure income job, and they're like man, I can't give up my six-figure income job to go play football in this league where it might be defunct in, in six months. Like, a lot of people can't just quit their jobs to go play in a league, and now I think that adds confidence. I know you mentioned there's three-year contracts that were in there, but they weren't guaranteed, so there was no guarantee for a player to say, yeah, I'm going to leave my banking job or my, I don't know, my accountant job or whatever it is that they're doing, my real estate job to go play in this football league for a little bit and then it and then it washes out and I go back to my old job and they're like, Yeah, sorry, we already hired a new position. We we couldn't wait for you while you went and played football. So I think it adds confidence to future players to want to sign as well. Not just not just adding more money, but adding more confidence that hey, this is a viable option for you to to have a good career in. This is true, sir. You bring confidence into the league. 
money solves problems, right? It's the biggest problem solver there is, especially for a small business, and especially when you have employees that may be concerned that they're not going to get paychecks. And on a side note, sometimes the government doesn't even pay people play uh play their employees. So <laughs> yeah, they, okay, so yeah, the alliance they went is like no three different months than the with, or, They went like almost three months without paying people. Right. Come on. It's no big deal. Uh well Loudbeard, we're we're all out of time. The I know AAF, I, the AAF is not out of money, but we're all out of time. I know. I I think I talked too much, Chris America, about the AAF. I was spinning circles. I didn't even get to bring up Antonio Brown. He's getting hot out there. He's he's meeting with Rooney and, and they're sitting down and He's yeah, that, got videos coming over. out that he's saying, call me, pay me guaranteed money. This guy's a hot mess. But we'll have to talk about that more on tomorrow's show because you're right, Chris America. We're out of time. Yeah. Listen, man. Tristan Thompson, Kyrie, Kylie Jenner. Bigger news. Yeah, you said Kyrie, too. You stole my, my bit. I did. Uh, good show, uh, no, my friend. No fat lady singing today? To the fat lady uh, Make sure you download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, ScoutTeamRadio.com, wherever you can. See you.